Chris, have you seen the new video about Martin Huber's tactical katana? And one of the guys have commented, Chris is going to make eyes on that because it's a tactical thing and you make tactical stuff. Hey man, yeah, I've seen it and it was a pretty amazing video and the katana was pretty amazing. I actually just wanted to start recording a new video. I think we should build a freaking cool tactical sword now, but not a katana. We should make a double-edged sword. That sounds like an amazing idea. Let's look for some steel and we can start building it. So the sword is now profiled and I'm so excited. I love swords and swords are a reason why I started knife making and this sword is still super super heavy so I have to remove a lot of material. And I've also forgot to film to drill out the holes but it's actually just drilling three holes into the tang. I don't want to remove too much uh, material in the tang because the sword is still quite top heavy and I want to have a quite nice balance in the end because I don't have a big pommel or a guard as on a normal sword and we still have full tang in the end and it's really weird to have something long and thick in the hand. I'm not used to that. <laughs> So now it is time to grind that knife, sword, whatever you want to call it. I think it's called a sword. And um, I've weighed that thing and it is over 850 grams. Yes, I measure in grams, not in that freedom measurement that you do overseas. So um, I have to scribe some lines and then start working on this big boy. So the sword is now roughly ground, really, really roughly ground. It is really challenging uh, for me because the leverage points are super big on this one. But before I want to do any kind of grinding, I want to try to heat treat this knife or sword and it doesn't fit into my heat treating comb. So I have to heat treat it in my forge. So we'll go to light up my forge now and heat treat this pretty cool sword.
So after years of having this big sandblasting machine and haven't had the chance to sandblast anything big, just small knives, I finally have the chance to sandblast something big and it pays off to have a big sandblasting cabin. So the blade is now hardened and tempered and I have tempered it with a torch which is not optimal but it can also work and now it's up for the grinding and removing a lot of material and a lot of steel now and I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a huge challenge for me because this blade is super long but I'm really looking forward to have this blade finish ground. All right guys, so something really bad happened and sadly I didn't catch it on film. Nice. But I'm good and that is the most important thing because um, some belts can get destroyed by grinding it and I never had an exploding surface conditioning belt ex exploding and this is not the worst case, um, but the worst case is it destroyed my 16 inch contact wheel um, so I was just grinding the whole day I was probably tired and the belt was already pretty pretty old and um, the, the edge is really thin and it sucked the blade into uh, this grinding belt and um, it ripped it apart yeah big piece of dog shit which is not the worst problem, but the problem is because I'm grinding with a work rest and um, this just sucked the sword in what happened. So I was uh, grinding along and um, I was probably going a little bit too low on the blade and then the blade rolled up just a little bit like that and it sucked into the surface conditioning belt and then it went onto the work rest and then it cut right into here it pulled the blade down here smashed it against this one and then nothing more happened luckily i've got okay. all my fingers on because the edge is already pretty thin and the blade just got ripped out of my hands but it could have cut my fingers maybe off um, so i'm quite happy that everything is well i'm going to finish the blade because I kind of want to see how it's actually turned out, um, even though it has a chink in this blade, which is actually really sad, but for you guys, I want to finish the blade, show you the end result, but I promise you, I have something much cooler planned in the pipeline, and this is actually just a testing blade and um, a training blade, I would say. So it's not that big of a deal that there's a chink in it. It is just a training blade for me because I've got something much cooler down on the pipeline in the next coming up months, I hope. Um, so you have to stay tuned for that. And guys, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, um, so you can see the process of maybe becoming a sword maker. So now that the blade is actually finished ground even though it has a chink in its blade I want to stay positive and I want to attach some G10 to it and I thought because I want to blacken out the sword in the end with a tan G10 handle it will look really really nice and we will have a great looking contrast
So I've got now the sword sandblasted and um, the handle is also done. So now I want to work on the finish and I'm going to use some gun bluing for that. This bottle is empty, but I've got a full one. And I also want to try something out with mustard. So first of all, I'm going to add some gun blue and after that some mustard. And I just want to see how it reacts on the blade and maybe I get a really cool, distressed, apocalyptic kind of style blade in the end. That is my goal. Let's see how it turns out. Alright guys, so let's do some cutting with that thing, shall we? That is so fucking cool. I am just astonished. It went so cleanly through, but just look at that. Clean cut, really nice, really happy. Let's do another one. So cleanly. What an amazing piece and an amazing project. And guys, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you got any kind of questions, leave a comment down below. I try to answer them as quickly as possible. I will see us in the next one.